Hi, welcome back to 5 Minutes of Wheelchair Basketball. Uh, I just watched a video from last week on the two-man game on defense, and there was a lot of information, so uh, hopefully you were able to go back and maybe watch some of the uh, video at utamovingmatchtv.com and try to see some of the principles uh, that we talked about as far as decision making and some of the factors that affect decision making on the defensive side and I really like defense I think defense you can control and dictate the pace of the game and dictate the game through defense but hey you gotta have offense because you can't win if you don't score points so let's talk a little bit about the two-man game on the offensive side and again I think some of the keys on the offensive side are one definitely proactive communication and that's thinking ahead and knowing what you're going to do and uh, sometimes we'll call that having a plan um, so basically what you want to try to do we talked about this last week your offense is going to set up on your two-man game right here so what we're looking for uh, offensively are a couple things one we might set up a big here and have this guy Maybe be a sealer, a smaller um, or a quicker or faster person who can seal. So what we're going to look for here, if we're going to set up like this, is one, where we're setting up. Okay, are we going to set up high? Are we going to set up low? And there's a lot of reasons to do either one. So, but what we're looking for is to get this guy to turn his chair so he's looking that way. If we can get this defensive player to turn his chair so that this is his back, then our sealer can go right here, and then this guy follows the seal in. This is a big boom. That's, that's easy money right there in the bank. Um, so maybe what these guys want to do would be set up down here <coughs> and then have your big man bring these guys up and try to get this lower defender to turn his back as they come up so that we can set the seal low. That might be one thing to look at. We're set it up high And go that way and get this guy to turn his back and we'll do the high seal so we're gonna look at matchups over here and we're gonna look at defensive tendencies over here and we're gonna see especially if the balls working on this side the balls over here we're working over here without the ball trying to get that seal by going low going high and especially looking at Functional matchups here. First push of the defender. Can we get in on that seal before the defender makes the push? Or ideally, get them to turn their backs by getting your diver to use this space right here. So that's working away from the ball. Second plan would be working on the ball. So now we got to look at, and what, uh, what messes a lot of people up is... They'll put a sealer back here, but maybe he's not a good shooter. So now we got to look at range. Are they going to respect this? Because basically, your two-man offensive game isn't going to work if the defense doesn't respect this guy as a shooter. So let's add on to what we talked about last week. This guy's a right-handed shooter. He's got two things to think about. One... I know they're going to jump low, all right? Maybe he knows that because he's played him before. Maybe he doesn't know that. So he's going to get the ball, and he's going to see how does the defense set up. Are they setting up? Are they setting up here and here to jump low? Are they setting up here and here to jump high? Let's say they're setting up to jump high. Maybe one option would be, oh, I know they're jumping high. 
I'm going to get the ball and I'm going to attack low. That might be one option. We love it when we play teams where the guy behind the ball is not aggressive and doesn't, the guy behind the screen is not aggressive and doesn't look to attack and doesn't look to create behind the screen. There's a lot of good shooters that are happy sitting behind the screen and shooting, but as you go up in competition, you're not going to get that because you're going to have people who are going to take that away from you. So he sees, oh, they set up to jump high or they've set up to jump this pass or they've set up to come in here. So now what he wants to do is he wants to come down here and create space. He wants to bring that defender out here to create space. And then what's going to happen is this guy comes over, yeah. sets his pick right here. He's going to reverse. And your picker now can roll in. And so you have the pick and roll. So we're looking to create space for that pick and roll there. And what happens a lot of times, I'll see this guy will go into the defense. So you don't want to go into the defense there. You want to create the space and you want to let him jump. Another thing that happens is when this guy jumps, this guy automatically fights to go in one-on-one. -on -one. Take it easy. Take it easy. Look for, the, look for the pick on the guy who jumps the ball. And again, KYP, know your personnel. If this guy can't work with the ball with two hands, because what's going to happen if he comes over here and he's dribbling right hand and this guy jumps, he's going to lose the ball if he can't put the ball in his left hand. So maybe he's going to fake that and come back up, set the pick up here. So there's a lot of options if you can work with both hands, dominant and non-dominant, behind the screen, and if you can create that space on that side. Once we get the space, then the picker rolls in for the easy basket. So what do defenses do at that time? Then we know this ahead of time, and we have a plan, and we know, all right, they're going to jump low, and they're going to send help from here. So what do you have to do as an offense? you got to have a threat right here. Somebody who can make this shot, or somebody who's a big who can come in here and get the shot right here. So now we've got a plan. If not, they're not going to respect that, and they're going to say, take that shot. We did the math. That's 30% shot. Okay? So then what happens? They send the help for the pick and roll, third man help. Fourth man comes over here. So we got a two-on-one over here, and we're either going to get a seal on this side, or... This guy's going to come in, take the defense, and this guy's got a 60% shot right here. So when we're training our shooters, we're looking at range, and we're looking at, can they make the shot? <clears throat> what is make the shot? Well, looking at our statistics for the last six years, practice shooting at 80%, translates over to roughly 50 to 55 percent in games. So if your guys right out here at 12 to 15 feet, they need to be making 8 out of 10 in practice. 8 out of 10 is a good standard that will, when all of this happens, that'll translate over to 50, 55, maybe on a good day 60 percent shooting. But if this is a, a 30 percent practice shooter, if your shooters are 3 out of 10 in practice, then you're probably going to get 30% or less in games. That's what they call a closed set environment where you got the clock, you got the fans, you got the movement, you got everything, and it affects shooting percentages. So, when we're looking at range and shooting percentage, and we're looking at the whole plan, we know going into the offense. They're going to jump low, they're going to send third man, the ball's going to swing here, then we're going to swing here. We already know and we'll move our players around to kind of change these decision-based uh, factors so that it's not the same thing every time on the defense. But really, if you can get you a couple good shooters, 
maybe a third right here, and it's worth spending extra practice time on your shooting to get those open, uh, open drill shooting up around 70 to 80 percent. That'll transfer much better because what's going to happen is if you run this two-man game on offense and you read the defense and you make your decisions based on the reads and what you know is going to happen ahead of time, you're going to get a nice, hopefully, 50% game shooting. And 50% will win a lot of games. So another thing, go back, MovingMassTV.com, watch some of those games. Uh, we had UTA and University of Alabama, UTA and University of Illinois, uh, UTA and Dallas Mavericks, um, some games. Um, I think we've got some games with the Austin Records who, Records, who have some really big players. They have some good height, and they try to use it. And watch how teams are setting up and using that two-man game and knowing automatically, as soon as they go baseline, they know it's going to jump. They know where the ball is going to go, and the whole team is on the same page with their offensive play. And you start working your offense like this, work your defense like last week. We have some good chess match games, and it'll come down to who can make the shot. So... Look at these, email me if you have any questions, and then uh, next week we'll move on to another part of the game.